Welcome back to Closing Mouth Media. My name is Chris and I'm your host for today. So typically for these WandaVision episodes, you'll see me and my partner in crime, Paul. Paul uh, is not here, clearly. I am doing this one solo. He gave me the A-OK to do it. And that is all on me, my full audience. Uh, I'm depriving you of, of your man, Paul, aka CYM Cupid, because, um, you know, I was weak last night. I fell asleep. That's why you're getting this episode review so late. But I want to give you a personal guarantee that for episode seven, eight, and then the finale at nine and the possible 10th episode that some people are talking about, they will be up at four or 5 a.m. As soon as the episode's done, we record, we upload, and that's it. So you'll be getting those very early. Um, as you can see and possibly hear from the acoustics in here, even though I'm still recording on a phone because we're working on a transition, we're working on a transition. So... Uh, you know, there might be a little bit better lighting. There might be some upgraded share. There's a couple things coming. So keep your eye out for that. Definitely keep your eye out for that. Okay. If you know what that is, you know what it is. All right. If you don't, you don't stay tuned. So getting back to WandaVision episode six, review and reaction from yours truly. See why I'm Chris. I love this episode. I'm going to give you my score right away. I usually wait until the end. 9.25. I thought one or two scenes in there, I, I could have, you know, had been different, uh, a little bit, slightly different, nothing major. Um, but basically, I'm going to give you the three storylines and how I felt about them and then the conclusion. So storyline one, we have Monica, Wu, and Darcy. I don't even build them up because this was actually like the C story and then the B story was Vision and the A story was Wanda and Pietro. So the C story was Monica, it was Jimmy Wu, it was Darcy, they're working together, and they get kicked off the whole thing. And the director is like, see you later. So then they decide, eh, we're going to beat up the guys that are kicking us off the, the base, and we're going to hack in. So Darcy, and this is one of the scenes that I wasn't crazy about, because Darcy's just like, oh, I have to hack into his mainframe. Okay, I'm in. And I'm like, bruh, it does not take three seconds to do some shit like that, like, unless you knew the password. Um, so <laughs> that was one thing that just kind of annoyed me. The hacking scenes in general, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I'd rather it be done like off screen. So if they cut away and then cut back and it's like, okay, it's been 20 minutes at least she, she did her thing, you know? Um, but anyway, so she hacks in and they start seeing that he's uh, watching Vision's movements and he can see all the people that are around him and they've like hacked into him and all these different weird things. And he should have a head count, but he didn't tell anybody and, 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 all this stuff. So then basically Monica and Jimmy Woo say, hey, we're going to get out of here. We're going to go meet up with my connect to try and get us into Westview in uh, without being, you know, mind controlled. Darcy says something important here. And she says, Monica, you can't. Your cells are changing on a molecular, molecular level in which I think we're getting Monica Rambo with some powers, you know. So... I think she's going to get her powers maybe the next time she goes in or when she comes out. Who knows? But that's definitely coming. Captain Marvel 2 will probably explore that more um, and why she kind of was a little upset with Captain Marvel. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so we move on from their storyline. Darcy stays behind. Monica and Jimmy Woo drive away to go meet up with the Connect, who some people might think is Reed Richards. John Krasinski, please. Uh, Sue Storm, maybe. Or... Uh, you know, it could be Ironheart. It could be a few different characters from the comics. Um, I don't know. I really hope it's Reed Richards because I will lose my shit. I'm a huge Fantastic Four fan. Um, even the shitty movies. Well, not the last one. The last one was just that bad. Even though it has two of my favorite actors and Michael B. Jordan and Miles Teller. It was bad. It was really bad. And Kate Mara. She's, she's cool too. Um, anyway, so uh, moving on. Darcy gets locked up by the director. They find her hacking in, whatever. And the director's hiding one last thing that she doesn't get to see, I don't think. Or if she does, she doesn't reveal it to the audience. We don't find out. Um, really interesting. The director's clearly hiding stuff. Is he Mephisto? Some people think so. I kind of don't. I think he's definitely hiding something, but I don't think he's Mephisto. If he is, that'd be pretty cool. And I think he's working with someone on the inside, which is where we get to storyline B or the second storyline of this episode, which was Vision's storyline. Vision basically tells Melanda in the beginning of the episode, hey, I'm out, I'm going to do Neighborhood Watch. It's Halloween and these kids are bad. And it was really funny how he said it. Um, I really enjoy how, sorry, I really enjoy how uh, Vision or Paul Bettany is, is, is just as Vision, he's amazing. 
Um, so he leaves, and what he does is he goes to the outskirts of the town, and he sees people that just aren't moving. So one woman is just frozen. Well, there's a bunch of people that are frozen, but one woman's frozen, and you just see a single tear roll down her face. She doesn't blink, she doesn't move, she doesn't flinch. Vision goes up to a few people, hey, hey, uh, hello, nothing. That one tear was just, oof, it was amazing, chills, amazing. And then he finds Agnes at the end of the town, for whatever reason she's out there, and he goes, Agnes, Agnes, hello. And then he like unlocks her, cause she can't, she's frozen. And he goes, oh, you're part of the Avengers, you're part of the Avengers, you're here to save us, you're Vision. And he goes, who are the Avengers? And so clearly he has no idea about anything pre-Westview. And that's probably why Wanda's gotten away with doing this uh, so easily, almost, I'd say, kind of. Especially to someone as powerful as Vision. And then she goes, yeah, but am I dead? And he goes, no, of course not. And he goes, but you are. You're dead. And he goes, what do you mean? Dead, dead. She starts screaming, no. It's like really scary. I'm getting the chills just now thinking about it. Oh my gosh, it was really freaky. And basically, so he puts her back and goes, I'll fix this, Agnes, I promise. And then she goes, howdy, neighbor, bye, or whatever, and drives away and snaps back into her thing after telling him, oh, Wanda doesn't even let us think about leaving. Um, and there was a commercial that kind of went parallel with, with this Agnes stuff, which was that it kind of tells you, like, drink my magic or have my magic. It was like yo, maggot, ma yo magic, like the yogurt, like yogurts, but it was yo magic. And I guess it was kind of implying that the closer you are to Wanda, the more magic you're going to get and the more like you're going to be fed and that the people actually frozen on the outskirts are kind of dying, I guess, which is really messed up. So um, that all happens. That's storyline B. Vision almost almost wrapped up. Vision then goes to the final to Ellis Drive. And that's where Westview gets cut off by uh, Wanda's force field. And he tries to crawl through it and he starts coming apart like piece by piece. I mean, this scene was just incredible. I, I don't expect you to be watching if you haven't watched the episode yet. This scene was amazing. Oh my gosh. He was crawling out and he like falls into a fetal position. You could see the pain on his face and his body. And he just lies there, and doesn't move and just accepts that he's going to sit there. And all the guys come up with the guns and he just lays there. It was... Oh man, it was horrible to watch. I mean, amazing to watch. It was, but it was like really emotional for a freaking robot. Um, so now that's the end of storyline B. We get to or we get storyline A, storyline three, but storyline A really. This is the main story of the show. Since Vision was gone, Pietro is the father figure, as he called himself. Billy is starting to take after Pietro a little bit, tease Tommy about being the nerdy twin and Billy's the cool twin, whatever. So Pietro dresses them up for Halloween or dresses Billy up for Halloween and Billy only as Quicksilver and himself as Quicksilver. And then he dresses up and his hair kind of looked like Wolverine, to be honest, but it was Quicksilver's hair from the comics back in the day, basically. Uh, Tommy looks like he's dressed up as Doctor Strange, which was pretty cool, maybe a little bit of foreshadowing for Doctor Strange appearance later on. I would love to see it. Um, so he, that was that was that. And um, basically what happens is, is that they go out as the four of them. Wanda finds out the Vision's not doing Neighborhood Watch. Pietro starts running havoc with the boys, racing them around, smashing pumpkins, silly stringing people, stealing everybody's candy. And Wanda basically says, like, you're a bad influence, blah, blah, blah. And they talk about certain memories throughout the episode. And at one point before this in the house, they talk about a memory that Wanda doesn't really remember, where they're dressed up as Black Widow and Nick Fury, which was awesome. She doesn't really remember it. And then she starts testing him, which is, I think she doesn't remember it because it wasn't her. It was a different Wanda that he grew up with and had that memory with. And that's why he looks different. That's my theory. I don't know. That's just my theory. So I think he's being mind controlled also because he does have tendencies of the Pietro from the X-Men universe, like sleeping until 4 a.m., uh, asleep 4 p.m., acting out, um, pulling pranks, you know, being kind of childish, but in a fun, goofy way. And then she also sees him as him if he got sh when he got shot, but with his face, not Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson's face. Um, kind of like she saw Vision with the thing pulled out of his head. 
messed up and all gray. So it gets to, 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 to a head basically where he's like, listen, I know you're controlling everything. I know you're doing this. Like, how do you do it though? Like, that's cool. I think you gave them better lives. You kept the couples and the kids together. You, uh, you know, gave everybody better jobs. And he said, where were you keeping the kids this whole time? Just in their beds? Cause you didn't want to subject them to this, like to pain. And she doesn't really answer, but she says, you don't think this is wrong? And he goes, no, I think it's awesome. I'm impressed. And so basically, I think she's still getting manipulated. And by who, however, I think it's Agnes still. I just do, I just think it's still her. Why was she at the edge of town right where Vision was? Why does she, is dressed up as a witch, first of all. Um, why is she saying, everyone else, Norm and other people said, it's all her, it's she, it's her. And then she's saying, it's Wanda, it's Wanda, Wanda's the problem. Why? I think it's her. I really, 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 really do. Um, so, uh, basically what happens is, is that Billy unlocks powers as Quicksilver. So he's a little Quicksilver, he's fast. Um, he has super speed. And then a little bit later, Tommy starts hearing a voice in his head, and it's Vision's voice as he's crawling out of the force field, and he's in pain, and he's being ripped apart. And so Billy, uh, or Tommy, stops Billy from running. And you see he kind of has Scarlet Witch's powers, but they looked blue to me. I don't know if that was, I don't know, they looked blue. Uh, so Billy has quick, uh, super speed, Tommy has what seemingly is uh, Scarlet Witch's powers, Wanda's powers, you know, force fields, the energy, and also the mind reading, because he's listening into the thoughts of Vision. And he basically tells his mom, Wanda, mom, he says, obviously, but it's Wanda, mom, like, dad's uh, in trouble, he's in trouble, blah, blah, blah. And she says, focus, focus, tell me, where is he? And she, he goes, uh, he's by uh, people, uh, soldiers, and they're, they have guns, or pointing at him, and blah, 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 and he's in pain. So she obviously knows he went past Ellis Drive, he went into the, towards the base. So now we come to the climax of the episode. To recap really quickly, Darcy uh, gets caught by the director and is in handcuffs um, while she was hacking. Wu and Monica are driving away to go meet the Connect. Pietro is in the town and he tries to like cut in uh, to Wanda's conversation with Tommy like and say oh it's, it's no big deal don't worry about him and she just blasts him away which was hilarious she's like listen this is my husband this is my hubby so and then sorry that's my dog and then the uh, only other thing was uh, the other storyline which was Vision was crawling out so now Wanda freezes everyone she just and this scene was so mind blowing and beautifully done I absolutely adored this scene and she freezes everybody, and then she goes, she goes, mm, blah, whatever the fuck her powers sound like and when you're by them. But she's just like, boom. And the shit starts expanding and quick. So now the director hops in a car with three other characters. Drive, drive, drive. Everyone from the base gets sucked up. Darcy gets sucked up into it. The base turns into a, a, a carnival. All the people turn into, you know, soldiers that were running turn into clowns running. Um, and then Wu and Monica Rambeau are driving away from it and they barely get away, it, like touches the back of their car, they barely get away. Darcy's in it, everyone's in it except Wu and Monica who are meeting the connect, hopefully read your kids. And then the director and three characters that are just kind of nameless characters. Wanda has fucking snapped. Like full blown snapped. She expanded this shit far and wide. So now it's not just Ellis Drive that she was telling Billy and Tommy to not go past there. It's everywhere in this remote area for right now. She's controlling it all. But I think she has help. And I think it's the Agnes. Anyway, that's my review for this episode. Uh, I was mind blown. Let me know what you think down below. I absolutely love this show so much. I hope this sets a standard for the rest of the Marvel shows. And I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Let me know down below in the comments. Just know, seven, eight, nine. Episode seven, eight, nine, that finale especially, we are going to come to you right away as soon as that episode drops with a reaction and a review to the episode and what it might mean for the future of the MCU. As someone who does have a little bit of 
economics experience, you might want to hear it here first um, from me and from my colleague, Paul, my co-host, my boy, Paul. All right, so 789, you will see both of us here. Subscribe if you want to. Uh, a lot of the people that watch these are not subscribed, so I would really appreciate you subscribing and coming back to watch it. Uh, hit that notification bell if you want to, because then you'll know when we drop the episode, right at 4 or 5 a.m., and if you're up, you can watch a reaction and review right away. I don't see other YouTubers be doing this stuff. Just saying. And by the way, one last thing. As you can tell, the lighting is a bit different. It's a little bit better than, you know, my bedroom, where we were doing these reviews. Spoiler. And uh, a little better chair going on, too. There's a couple things uh, sitting around me that you don't, you don't know about, but if uh, you're a fan of Seasons... As we are here at the Close Mouth Podcast, um, you know, maybe there's something coming. Maybe there's a little reveal that all of our fans out there don't know about yet. Stay tuned. Close your mouth. Hush gang. Close your mouth.